The Lord and Lady are still on holiday. Christmas wraps up for them on 12th night, 6th January. But for the labouring classes, they are back at work doing what they have to do. And for me, that means working on the outer curtain wall and towers and gathering a lot of stone. This is going to be one of those episodes that isn't very long, but takes a long time to make. Planning makes things easier. It is worth taking the time to mark out a large build before you commit to the final blocks. In reality, there would have been no castle building happening in winter. The lime mortar is the issue. Lime mortar shouldn't be used when the temperature drops below 5 degrees Celsius. It needs to be protected until it is cured, which in winter could require almost 60 days. And if it freezes in the meantime, the mortar will be damaged and compromised. So we shall just ignore the snow at the back of the castle? This is Minecraft, I can keep building. The outer curtain wall is made in the same manner as all the other walls. Inner and outer walls of dressed stone with a rubble infill, and the lower courses made of stronger stone with a higher iron content, represented here by the deep slate. The wall needs to be high enough to protect the castle and be difficult to scale, while still low enough for arches on the inner wall to easily fire over the top. I have chosen D-shaped towers for the outer curtain wall. These were quite common. You have the curved front to deflect the force of projectiles and a flat back, which is cheaper, easier, and quicker to construct. These towers also have open backs. Well, stoneless backs. The backs were filled with wooden boards that gave some protection from the weather, but which could quickly be removed or destroyed. The reason for these towers comes down to two things, cost and paranoia. Any wall made of wood rather than stone is going to be cheaper. But also, how worried are you that an attacking force could take your outer walls? Should they manage to do so, your retreating men can easily remove or destroy the wooden walls, leaving the aggressors with no useful cover within the towers they've just captured. I'm also only putting crenellations on the outer edge of the walls and towers for exactly the same reason. Minimise cover should the wall be taken. There is another defensive feature being added to the outer curtain wall, the talus. A talus is a sloped portion added to the lower part of the wall and provides a lot of extra protection. It makes undermining a wall a lot more difficult because we've just added several metres to the width at the base. Siege towers cannot get in close, and siege ladders have just been made fairly useless. You need a siege ladder to be pretty much up against a wall in order to bear the weight of the men climbing it. Now the ladder has to be placed at an angle because of the talus and with more air and less support under it. And suddenly there is a high risk of it breaking when armoured men start to climb it. Lastly. Those on top of the wall can drop stones through the machicolations onto the talus. The stones will either bounce out into the attackers, or better yet, they will shatter, spraying the attackers with stone shrapnel. I'm adding taluses to all the outer walls. Whether I add them to the towers will depend on how I go in Minecraft, adding a sloped wall to a curved face. It may not happen. The other thing the talus will do for me is unify the look of the outer curtain wall as it comes up just above the top of the ironstone foundation. I think that's going to work really well. I'm going to finish off the walls and towers off camera between episodes as I keep running out of stone. So very short today, but this is a slow process. There are end cards on the screen if you want to keep watching. And for those of you who've made it this far, put the code phrase, the grind is real in the comments below.